So, now we're helping the Temporal Agency from the 31st century. This is still a Federation organisation, and one that upholds the Temple Prime Directive during an era when the manipulation of time is running rampant. This has resulted in numerous incursions throughout different time periods, and unveiled a shadowy figure of the Envoy, a time traveller, someone seeking to manipulate events to their advantage for some unknown reason through a series of proxies. There's been a temporal disturbance in the 27th century. It's happening in the Lurs system. Vorgon mercenaries are targeting a scientist named Cal Dano. This is big. We must keep Dano and his research out of Vorgon hands. I've transmitted the temporal coordinates. Meet me there. As usual, Daniels makes a sudden entry. Do you have any questions? Lots. The file you sent me says it's a toxutat. What do the Vorgons want with that? We believe the Vorgons wish to sell it. The power to kill a star is incredibly valuable in certain circles. This thing kills stars. Great. Do you have any questions? Yeah, is this wrapped up with the whole envoy thing? We're not sure. There's some data indicating a connection to a Black Ops unit in the Vorgon Defense Force. Other info suggests that they're independents, working for the highest bidder. Regardless, we need to stop them, no matter who's pulling their strings. So, these Vorgons actually turned up in the next generation, 2366, searching for this Toxutaton Riser, the pleasure resort planet. Picard found it ahead of them while he was there on holiday. He ended up teaming up with the, let's say, adventurer? called Vash in an effort to procure it first. He did, and records say that he destroyed it. It remains to be seen just in what order we'll be partaking in these events, because time travel. Lurse Prime was an inhabited world around three million years ago, but life seems to have long since died out. It was mostly animals and plant life. Time shift complete. Permission to come aboard? So we've jumped ahead a couple of hundred centuries. We're still in the Lurse system, but now in the year approximately 2677, based on a stardate calculator I found that seems to match up, so take that with a grain of salt. Demet notes with curiosity that Lurse is in the mid-stages of terraforming now with a small colony. Caldano is stationed here, at a Daystrom Institute research facility. The Vorgans may already have what they came for. Bring us into scanning range. We need to find out. Okay, before we do, this Caldano, what do we know on him? He's a brilliant scientist who recently completed work on a quantum phase inhibitor known as the Tox-Utat. While it was designed for peaceful purposes, the Tox-Utat could be a powerful weapon in the wrong hands. Hands like those of the Vorgons. Well, in that case, Helm take us into orbit, and beware of that Vorgon ship. So, we have a time-travelling scientist who made a device that can control the fusion within a star. Wasn't there a series of hollow novels about that, or should I say, Hulo novels. Come on, it was funny. Rassilon, Hand of Omega, a device that could be used to create... You know what? Never mind. The Vorgon ship is an unknown class, just termed a battleship here, although later Intel will term it a Rincoden class. 
Its primary weapons are chronitons and tetrions as damaging energy weapons, a rather exotic particle type to match its bold choice of tiger-striped hull plating. We give it a scan and find that the Toxu Tat is not a board, nor is anyone who matches this Carl Dano's life signature, but the ship is at a ready status. Temet surmises that the Vorgons and Dano are probably still planetside. It's highly likely the Vorgons are at Cal Dano's research facility trying to get what they want. I'll take point on this one. I need you to keep an eye on that Vorgon ship and its crew. They might send reinforcements, or open fire from orbit. And I'm guessing, as much as you do trust me, you don't want to let a Starfleet officer into a future Federation research lab in case I memorise something. Fine, spoil sport. So we place ourselves between the Vorgon ship and the planet's surface. As soon as we beam Daniels down, the Vorgons realise what we're after and power up their systems. We raise shields in response. The Vorgons have cornered Caldano. Engaging them now. The Vorgon battleship is very powerful and can launch a series of harasser drones that attempt to grapple us with tractor beams. And on top of this, their rather powerful weaponry, coupled with a feedback pulse, can deal significant amounts of damage, and they can bring our facing shields down in no time. Should have asked Daniels what era this ship was from. He wouldn't have put us against a vessel that was too advanced for us, right? We jettison dried plasma to choke its intakes and stall its impulse for a while so we can focus on one side and attempt to break through. But the designs are recycled from an unapproved 31st century Federation concept. Suffice to say, the Vorgons, if they were native to this time frame, well, I doubt we'd be lasting as long as we have against them. Ah, that's the annoying thing about time travel. Just because you're fighting someone in the 27th century doesn't mean that they're from the 27th century. They could be time travellers just like we are. The Vorgons have been out after our disagreement. Eventually, we disable the vessel's weaponry, it seems, and it springs a leak. For now, it's taken care of. So, let's see if they want to talk with us now. This is Baratas, commander of the VSB Arborel. You are interfering with the private matter that does not concern you. Identify yourself. Well, it sort of became our matter when you locked onto my ship with Tetrion weapons. Also, Temporal Accords and Prime Directive. You know, you know, we sort of have to intervene. My name is Azure. Baratos and I pursue a researcher named Caldano, and have been for some time. He has created a weapon of mass destruction. A very valuable weapon. The Tox Uthat and its maker will be ours. Our reinforcements are en route. You should not have interfered. And you shouldn't have painted your ship in tiger stripes. It looks hideous. Caldano's safe. For now. We're ready to beam up. We drop shields and beam up Daniels and Dono, but we raise them again when temporal fishes appear and drop in Vorgan reinforcements. Since these Borgons aren't of this era, destroying them won't disrupt the timeline. Oh, well, now that you mention that, then turn us around. These vessels are far smaller than the battleships that we were facing earlier and go down rather easily. So, proof that the Borgons are not from this era. I wonder exactly when they're from, but as usual, Daniels is rather vague on the details. This is simply because he has to watch everything he says. We are on a strict need-to-know basis, as even cursory information from his time could stick in our heads and influence our decisions in years to come. For example, I could go back to Starfleet in my own time and order some ships to snoop around Vorgon space to look for their time travel projects if I knew when and where to look. Caldano must fulfill his personal destiny. I've given him my time ship to do so. Please clear it for launch. Trust me on this. I can always get another ship. More Vorgons. We need to cover Cal's escape! Almost there. Just keep the Vorgons busy a bit longer. Now we have to protect the diminutive time shuttle as it powers up its temporal drive. We simply have to keep the Vorgons' attention off the vulnerable craft. And although we don't get a good look of it, it looks like the strange timeship capsule recovered by the crew of the Enterprise NX-01 in 2152 which is an XRT 55D type pod commissioned around 2991. He made it. The time ship is safely on its way. This is a temporary setback. 
Your interference will not keep us from Kaldano or the docks who thought. History can be changed, as you will see. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm well aware history can be changed. <laughs> Get on my level, scrub. Ah, I thought we broke that. The Arborel just engaged a temporal drive. They're gone. The Forgons know a lot about the Taksu Tot and its history. They'll want to reach a pivotal point in its timeline. There! I have them. Reading a new temporal ripple. In the year 2152. Unfortunately, I can't ask Captain Archer to get involved in this one, so if you don't mind. Temporal course laid in. Ready when you are. So, we're following Carl Dunno's path into the past, 2152. Alright then. We detect the Vorgon ship Arabelle by their long-range scanning. Seems that we're both looking for Darno's vessel. They are deploying temporal particles to mask their presence, and to Met advises we do the same. It's not a cloak, but sensor systems of this time won't understand what they're picking up, if anything at all. Time ship, or, or what's left of it, is currently on Enterprise, along with the body of Caldana. Ah. Well, on the plus side, this is recorded history, so what happened to Cal? He wound up here after a temporal incident that ended his long life and career. The Vorgons don't know this, however. We can't let them endanger Enterprise or her crew. Also, we should stay out of Enterprise's sensor range. They haven't detected us yet, but let's not tempt fate. We've emerged in the midst of a showdown over the salvaged timeship between the Sulaban, Vulcan's Enterprise and even the Tholians. History shows you have a habit of meddling in the affairs of others. Hmm. Understatement. We believe it is time to break you of that habit. On the plus side, with the Enterprise and the other contemporary ships engaged in their own skirmish over Dano's vessel, our own duel with the Vorgons will proceed unnoticed. Also, I tried to get some beauty shots of the NX-01, but this happens. We shouldn't get closer to the Enterprise. We don't want them to detect or scan us. As before, we limit the Arabelle's mobility and hammer home on one facing side to attempt to pierce their shielding. So. Carl Dano invents the Tox Utat in 26 something something, and then was supplied with Daniels' ship to escape the Vorgons. However, he ended up going somewhere else first, before re emerging in 2152 and starting this small temporal Cold War skirmish over the future tech of his vessel. Daniels doesn't seem surprised by any of this, so I suspect to him he's simply fulfilling history. After all, he said Dano had to fulfil his destiny not complete his mission, nor survive. A little callous, but I guess you have to be when eternity is on the line. As before, we eventually whittle down the Arabelle and stall it out. But just because more Vorgon reinforcements turn up. Now, according to history, the Tholians almost make off with the Temporal Shuttle, but it's recovered by an unknown method, presumably by an allied faction of the Temporal War. And there is history fulfilling itself. Daniel's agency has recalled the timeship, although it looks like the Tholians have noticed us. We were making a lot of noise. Unidentified vessels. You are temporal anomalies. You do not belong. Your chronicon signature matches a vessel we seek. We will know why. Submit to investigation, or you will be purged. Of course the Tholians would detect us, they've always been drawn to time and space phenomena. Tholian Captain, we are not aligned with these interlopers. In fact, we would be happy to ally with you against them. The Lion's proposal refused. You are anomalous. They are anomalous. You will all be purged. 
Rather than get involved in a three-way skirmish, we instead retreat and let the two sides whittle each other down. Quite notably, however, the Vorgons overpower the Tholian vessels, unsurprising as there is quite the power gap. We can't stand by forever, however, so we re-engage the Arboril. The Arboril is performing a temporal shunt. They're escaping! There's a Vulcan rescue team on its way to aid the Dakir. We should leave before they arrive and ask questions we're not prepared to answer. Agreed. Any idea where the Vorgons went, or when? Scanning for the Vorgons now. Ah, of course. They're heading to the Rysis system in 2366. The Taksu Tot was buried there, and it's about to be discovered by Jean-Luc Picard. And then it was destroyed by Picard, right? So what? Job done? That's the official record, yes. Truth is, Captain Picard realized the scientific value of the Taksu Tot and faked its destruction to fool the Vorgons. It worked. Until now. I'm reading a new disturbance. Soul System 2375. They know where it is. Course locked in. Are you ready for transit? Wait, wait, wait. So the Vorgons tried to get it back in 2366, then thought it lost. But now, at some point, have realised the ploy and jumped to 2375 to recover it again. So we should head them off there, then. Wait a minute, this star date was at the height of the Dominion War. The Toxutat is here, in a high security vault under Starfleet command. I assume the Vorgons are taking advantage of the chaos and the heavy damage to infiltrate the security facility and steal the Toxutat. It's a shame that the ruse didn't hold up. I wonder how long it took the Vorgons to figure it out. It held up for quite some time. I suspect our Vorgon friends are getting some help. History shows them giving up hunt after their failure in Rysa. Ah, so someone has tipped them off as to the location of the Toxu Tut and prolonged this debacle, and this is a new development to history. Unfortunately for us, we are detected by a Breen vessel, and this is the day during the Dominion War where they attacked Starfleet Command to send a demoralising message. The chaos of the battle might have fooled us at some cover, but we're going to have to fight our way through to reach Earth. Let's just hope that we don't stand out too much, and let's also hope that no one gets a good read on this Odyssey-class vessel crammed with 25th century technology. Of course, now I think about it, there are records of the Card's vessel, the USS Verity, which came about in the mid-2380s that looked a lot like an Odyssey-class. I hope that wasn't down to us. Just to be safe, let's just make an active effort here to try and block all incoming scans, please. I feel a little apprehensive about destroying several of these Breen ships, we do outclass them by a significant margin. What with the Iconian and Dyson Sphere advances made during those wars, but the bigger concern is temporal ripples. Although I'm sure Daniels would let us know if we do something too catastrophic. Let's take advantage of this lull in the battle to beam down, while we still can. Are you ready to beam down to Starfleet HQ? We ready and awaiting with no time to don era-appropriate uniforms. Let's just hope that those at Starfleet recognise the badge enough to ascertain that we're friendlies. Beaming in, we get to see firsthand the damage to Starfleet HQ, and we're in the high security vault. Bazaar detects Breen life signs, so there are ground troops here. I guess they took advantage of the battle to see what they could get from Starfleet. We never heard about this, but then again, this is a restricted facility. It's good to be working alongside Daniels, it's like 2270 all over again but with less Gorm and Klingons. Has the Klaxons sound dead Starfleet security line the corridors? Some may still be alive, but we can't stop to help them. We have to minimise our impact. Saying that, the next room does have a area full of Breen that we have to stun in order to get through. Let's just hope this doesn't change anything too. Amid the flames, debris and bodies, we can find live broadcasts of the status of Earth's defence from the Federation News Network. In orbit, the Federation fleet has engaged the Breen invasion force. Reports from San Francisco estimate casualties in the tens of thousands. Starfleet command is under heavy fire at this time. The Dominion War certainly took its toll on Starfleet. You could say that they never really recovered, what with the follow-up of the Borg attacks and Mars. 
and it left Starfleet with a decidedly more militaristic streak. Even in between then and the beginning of the Klingon War in 2405, Starfleet kind of went in the opposite direction, so scarred by turmoil that they took a back seat against the infiltration of the Undine out of fear of causing more destruction. We should probably ask that researcher what he knows. Oh, thank God you're not Breen. This is a nightmare. I think they're heading to the vault. What's left of my research team grabbed phasers from a security station and decided to hold the line. Against Breen soldiers. Complete, utter insanity. Please, help them. We head on to neutralise the Breen forces and save the researchers. There is no way to avoid conflict in the midst of this war, so uh, Daniels, sorry about the paperwork. Thanks for the assist. Anything I can help you with? Yeah, hi. Um, uniforms, technology. Uh, Mark Hale, Starfleet Spec Ops. Thanks for the help. The Breen thought Starfleet scientists couldn't fight. As you can see, they were greatly mistaken. Good, good. Glad to see you're well. Um, love to stay and help, but I'm here for a different purpose. Have you seen any Vorgons? Funny you should mention that. We have. One of my team picked up two Vorgon life signs in the vault on local sensors just before the Breen came to call. I notified security for all the good that did. Let me buzz you in. Main access is over here. The Federation fleet is advancing on the Breen positions, but casualties are high on both sides. Breen shock troops are beaming to locations on Earth where ground combat is the heaviest. Lastly, we have unofficial reports that Starfleet Academy is preparing to be overrun. We make our way to the door the researcher suggested, only to encounter a problem. There's been a bit of a cave-in. Damn, this thing's a total loss. I can open up secondary access for you, but you should know, the bringing made it in there. Could be rough going. Sure enough, we do encounter much resistance, but Daniels has no complaints, so we fight our way through the bring, even as they attempt to bar our path with icy frost. We pass on through a storage room of some description on our way to a main vault. Here, as in many other places all over the facility, bodies and flames litter the floor. Reports of a major strike led by the USS Cairo and the USS Enterprise are coming in. The Breen battle line appears to be breaking down, though heavy ground combat continues at several locations. We eventually arrive in a cavernous room filled with crates and boxes which contain many artifacts Starfleet has commandeered over the years, things that are either worthy of study or that are too dangerous to allow to fall into the hands of those who would misuse them. I've brought you this far, and you still won't join me? No, Envoy. Your war with the Federation doesn't concern us. Only the Tox Uthat matters. Nothing else. We are not alone in that pursuit, as you can see. These must be the meddlers that you spoke of, Varotis. Kill them quickly. So, the Envoy is here. It seems this is why Daniel's reports are conflicted. What began as a Vorgon-only matter of trying to steal the device has now, has now seen the meddling of the Envoy's temporal faction. The fight against Boratus and Adjur is a tough one, but we can take advantage of the cavernous location to attack from an angle of our choosing. They have an array of gadgets, from grenades to automated drones and healing auras, but with the terrain allowing us to hit and run, we can extend this fight into a series of ambushes. The downside is that your away team generally isn't as mobile as the player-controlled character, so they tend to go down a fair bit. We... we were so close. Azure, no! No! Envoy! Show yourself! Having trouble, are we? You see now the depths our foes will go to, Baratus. Join me, and you'll have your revenge. I swear it. Very well. I will follow your lead, Envoy. For vengeance! 
vengeance indeed. That flash was a sign that time has been altered in a substantial way. Things are going awry from the established history, and the future Daniels is from is in danger. I'll, I'll be fine. We need to focus. Find the Taksu Tat. Yeah, buddy. You've been really messed up, and I really want to know what's going on. I'm afraid that's need to know information. And right now, you don't need to know. I'm sorry, but there are things bigger than this to worry about. Fine, I'll find the Toxu Tut, but you can't stop me speculating. So, I suspect the distortions are why we're seeing him being twisted in such a fashion. It's 31st century temporal technology conflicting with a new timeline trying to establish itself. Reports of a major strike led by the USS Cairo and the USS Enterprise are coming in. The Breen battle line appears to be breaking down though heavy ground combat continues at several locations. Looking for the stellar device, we also stumble across the Struggle Undying, discovered by Hamish Lafayette in 2286 on SETI Alpha 5. It's an autobiographical text by Carl Noonien Singh, which lays out plans of conquest and augmentation. Clearly it has some merit, or it would be... We also find a Menthar Asian Assimilator trap, which was found in 2366, and it can drain all the power systems of a starship at a very rapid rate, rendering it immobile and then flooding it with a field of lethal radiation. Nasty device. We also find one of the super advanced androids that Mud came into possession of. Let's just leave that there, shall we? And finally we discover the location of the Toxu Tat. It was being studied by Starfleet under Dr. Takiata. It was discovered in Riser in 2366. Yep, this is definitely the device. Met reports that the Breen are withdrawing. This must be the end of the Battle of Sol, so we have a chance to return to our ship and quietly slip away. As we leave, we try to chase Daniels up on what just happened. As I said before, that information is need to know only. You knowing it could have an impact on future events. I apologize, but for now, it's my secret to bear. What's important is stopping the envoy and his allies. We might not be so lucky next time. So his increasingly twisted lips are sealed. That small device has caused no end of trouble, and now the envoy is definitely involved and is changing elements of even established history to suit himself. I'm sure we'll uncover more as time permits. But until then, we're on standby until the next temporal mission from Daniels, and I hope to see you there for the next time as we continue to explore the ever-changing narrative of Star Trek Online. Thanks for watching this episode, and I hope to see you again next time. I've been Rick, so long, and goodbye.